everyone, this is Joe Intel. Today I'm going to be taking a look at a 4K projector from BenQ, the HT3550. So first off, I just want to say that I'm not an expert at projectors, it's just that I have one and I've had the BenQ HT2050 for a while now and I really like that projector. So I reached out to BenQ and I asked them if I could review the brand new HT3550 because it's 4K, it has HDR and a few new features that my old one didn't have. So I do have to disclose that this was sent to me free for review by BenQ. So I watched a review from Scott's Tech and stuff and that guy seems like he really knows what's going on when it comes to projectors. So I defer to him. I'll leave a link to his video in the description. So one of the things that's important about the HT3550 is it has the same throw ratio as my HT2050, which means that it was a direct replacement. I could put it in the same spot and I can get the same size. So in my case, I have a hundred plus inch screen here and I wanted to make sure that I was able to use the same screen and not have to move the projector mount way further back. One thing to note is that this is an engineering unit, which means that it's not perfect. It's not the one that they ship out. And so any bugs that I found here might not be on the final unit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and list some pros and cons as I see it. So at first I thought that the 4K was gonna be the most important thing because, you know, more resolution the better, right? Well, what I found out was that from my viewing distance, with projectors in general, the resolution is not as important as other factors such as contrast ratio. This does have a higher contrast ratio than the HT2050 that I had because this does have dynamic iris. That can lead to more contrast, darker blacks, but also in this case, you can also notice that when the dynamic iris is on, it also allows certain scenes to be brighter. Other thing that's very noticeable on this is when I played Avengers Infinity War and it switched to HDR mode, in this case, it's HDR10. I definitely noticed a difference in the pop, in the colors, and the amount of colors, and the vibrance. And that is more noticeable to me than the higher resolution. Here you can take a look at some examples of HDR on and off, as well as samples with 4K on and off. Another thing to note is that this is a pixel shifting 4K, so the sensor itself is not actually 4K. For me, I can tell the difference when I'm close up, but again, it's not something that's extremely important to me. For me, I would rather have a clean, high contrast, and if possible, an HDR 1080p image rather than a 4K non-HDR image. The HT3550 is color calibrated out of the box. It has a paper here showing that they have calibrated it, so that's a cool touch. And what I've noticed is colors are very accurate. If you're the type of person who's not used to calibrated colors, they might look dull or washed out to you. But with all the lights off, awesome colors. The firmware on this model is user upgradable. So you can use a USB flash drive and upgrade the firmware. So if there are some fixes or some stuff that they've done to make the projector better, you can do it yourself. So that's handy. Another thing I like about this projector is it does have a motion enhanced feature, which basically interpolates the frames in between which is handy if you're watching sports where you want that smooth motion. So a lot of times you may not be watching a 60 FPS source. In this case, it'll fill in those frames and make it look smooth. Now, I would definitely not recommend this if you're watching a movie, unless you like that soap opera effect and everything looking like The Hobbit. Okay, so I have to say some of the cons on this particular model. Keep in mind, this is a review sample it might not be the same for the production unit. So the first thing is sometimes the remote is unresponsive. So I'll go to the menu and start pressing the buttons and it just will not respond. That's not something that I experienced on my HT2050. So I think that has to do with this being a production engineering sample. The other thing is I did notice some chromatic aberration. So what that is, is if you have a lens that's less than perfect, you'll notice that there's something called purple fringing, something that you don't really want because it kind of blurs the edges. In an ideal situation, that would be perfectly sharp. The other thing is that you definitely can hear the motor with pixel shifting on. Whether it's audible to you is dependent on how you have it mounted 
if you have it on a surface because the vibration can vibrate depending on how you have it mounted. So initially I didn't have it mounted and balanced well and I could definitely hear that motor. Later on I kind of balanced it out and the motor noise was less audible. Even without pixel shifting on, this unit definitely is louder than my HT2050. If you look at the specs, it's somewhere between two and three decibels, which is significant. The other thing I notice is that this projector is just not as bright. It's just not as bright as the HT2050. Now, I know that the colors are more accurate and that's a sacrifice you make, but in my situation where I have a window nearby, it's kind of handy to have those extra lumens. Another thing that I really liked about the HT2050 was that it had a smart eco mode, which helped the bulb last longer and it was able to adjust based on the scenario and the scene and it would make it brighter and less bright depending on the scene. Now, smart eco on this doesn't seem to work as well. I noticed like some artifacts. It might just be because this is a review unit and they might fix that. But I noticed that the image quality was not as good when I would use smart eco. The other thing is that this has more input lag than the HT2050. So if you're a heavy gamer and input lag is important to you, you may wanna look at some of the gaming projectors or the HT2050. I rarely game, so for me it's not an issue, but it might be an issue for you. So I would say if you're definitely looking for an HDR 4K projector, this is definitely one to look at. I mean, the price at under 1500 bucks right now, I think it's a steal, but if this is your first projector, I would say I would still take a look at the HT2050, or I think they have an HT2050A now, and so, maybe save yourself some money. So again, those are my impressions. As somebody who owns a projector, I love my projector, and I would highly recommend a projector to anyone. But again, I'm not a projector expert. I would defer to Majestech. He's another YouTube reviewer who focuses on projectors. He has a review on this also. So I would defer to him and Scott's Tech and Stuff channel. I'll leave a link to both in the description. So if you have any questions about this particular projector, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer any of them. I haven't tested the sound on this because I do review mostly audio stuff and I would not recommend using the sound from the projector by itself connected to some other speakers. So that was just a brief overview of the BenQ HT3550. I hope it was useful to you. Anyway, that's it. Take care. Bye-bye.